button right now. So hopefully mm -hmm. we're just starting to go live on YouTube right now. So yeah, cool. So let's give it a few minutes. There'll be people coming in. I think I have an email set to send. I already see quite a few people. Hi guys, how's it going? Say hello in the comments. Um, just say, um, say hello to Steven. So for you guys that don't know, Stephen Brooks, I um, actually worked with Stephen a bit on GPS Trainer a few, a couple of years ago now we started, right? And you were on the channel and you, um, we did a, a similar webinar like this. Yeah, my man. I remember. Yeah. And since then, you've turned more towards trading SPX though, right? So I guess a good starting point is like, and I, I remember a lot of people that were in your programs talking really like, really a lot about how great the SPX trading levels that we're going to talk about today were. And so I, I traded them a few times, um, and so they were awesome. Uh, but I never asked you like where did where did they come from? Like how like where did it start? How did you get into trading these particular levels? So a good a good starting point here, I think, would be to talk about how like where you started trading. Quick overview with that, and kind of let people know what sort of trader you are these days. Yeah, man. Well, it's it's, it's awesome to be here. Awesome to be, you know, partnering with you on some stuff and working with you again. Really awesome. I know you got a wonderful following and you're growing. So I appreciate you taking some time to let me come on and share some of the the really awesome things that I've I've seen and I've learned in the market because I've been doing this personally since 2007. And one of the things I love so much about the market is that it's always evolving. And I'm always learning new things too. And that's really, really cool. It's one of the reasons why I just love trading so much is because uh, there's always something else that I might be able to learn. And my trading journey started off really impressively unsuccessfully, just so horrible. And one of the ways I was able to turn that around was being very data dependent. I would be emotional in my trading if I thought a stock was going to go up, that would certainly be the top. If I thought a stock was going to go right. down, that would certainly be the bottom. And I said, maybe there's just some data. There, there's some data that says, okay, maybe this happens a disproportionate amount of time or, or maybe this happens a, a greater amount of time. And one of the reasons why in the last year, as you mentioned, Russell, that I focused a lot on the S&P 500 is – primarily because the amount of data available for the S&P 500, and you can basically bucket that with the SPX, which is the cash index, and SPY, which is the index ETF. If you take those two together, the amount of data that is accessible publicly for the S&P 500, again, if you bucket those together, is head and shoulders and miles and miles and miles above the amount of data you might be able to get elsewhere. Right. And that's what kind of started me down the rabbit hole for these levels, as you mentioned, just because the amount of data is just so much, it's so plentiful. And because the sample size and this, the amount of data that you get is so big, it really turns into some shockingly accurate information that we're able to pull out of it each and every day. Very cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's that's fantastic. So the um, the big question I got from a lot of people is telling people about what we're doing tonight, and a lot of people have started turning to funded futures. Have you had any experience with those things? And do you think these SPX levels will help anybody with that? Or what's your thoughts on that stuff? Just curious. No promises, of course. I mm -hmm. don't. All, of all the folks who I have uh, worked with when it comes to these levels. I, I really haven't had a person that got worse results from using them. Uh, in fact, I've been giving these levels, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but I've been giving these levels out for, for about a year now. And the, the results that we get in terms of our surveys, and, and there are more people than filled out this survey that get the levels, but this is just based on the people who actually did the survey. So I mean, these numbers are pretty are, are pretty cool. They're pretty awesome to see. So almost 60 percent of, of the, the folks who get the levels every day give us like a 60 percent uh, in terms of a five out of five rating. So I would call that deadly accurate. And then right. a step down, almost 30 percent call them really accurate. So about 85 percent of the of the traders out there who are getting these levels each day would rate it either a four out of five or a five out of five when it comes to these levels. And um, I do know there are large amounts of traders out there who are taking the levels 
what they've learned from these levels, what we've taught them from these levels on some of the best practices we've seen and we've noticed um, and using them. And based on my experience, a, a large number, a larger than most people would think, have gone on to be able to get somewhere between 50 and like $100,000 in, in funded accounts. And I think those those opportunities for retail traders are, are just absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And I think I'm not doing a great job sharing the screen. So I'm going to share it one more time so that we can actually see what I'm trying <laughs> to show here. I, I think I saw it just fine before you, you closed it there. But yeah, there we, we share go. It with you. All right, I'll there the we go. Yeah. Oh, so, right, yes. Yeah, so as I was saying, I uh, love doing it live. Yes. Yeah, so the levels and by the way, just just as a little bit of an, an aside, Starting tomorrow, so today is Wednesday, June seven. Starting tomorrow, before the market opens, um, you will be receiving these levels that are predetermined levels in the S and P five hundred cash index that are most likely to be supported or resisted. And these levels that you're going to get again each morning, starting tomorrow from Russell, and you'll get them for free for the next couple of weeks, no problem at all. I don't need your email, any of that stuff. These are the ratings that we get from the folks who, number one, get these levels, and number two, have actually filled out the survey because not everyone fills it out. And these are <laughs> right. super, 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 super accurate. And again, seven out of 671 people probably just don't like me, which is <laughs> the ones that gave me like a one or two rating. But really, uh, the huge percentages uh, of the students of ours or just the traders who get access to these levels find these very valuable. And there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different benefits that you might be able to get from utilizing them. Yeah. I, I love this. The fact that you've actually pulled people and shown the results, very transparent and, uh, and, and awesome because like a lot of the times people don't know what they're getting, right? They'll just be like, Oh, it's good. Or somebody will say like they recommend something, but to have those actual numbers from real customers, like set out like that, you're like, here's what people are saying. So uh, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been in this business for a couple of years and you really can't do anything unless you get results like this. Like even if, right. if you want to put something out there into the marketplace, you can't do it unless you get results like this. And this is how you get the feedback that, hey, the way we're communicating the information, the way we're teaching the information, the education that we have. OK, that checks all the boxes. So so we're good here. And this is a digestible format that is understandable and actionable from the actual uh, customer, student, trader, whatever you want to call them. Totally. And the industry is notorious for giving poor responses. A lot, there's a lot of things that go into it. So like, there's a lot of people, it's like the negative reviews on Yelp and stuff. Like it tends to be more negative than positive for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes people don't understand stuff or sometimes they give up too quickly. There's a lot of like, it always slants towards negative, right? Like it's yeah. always, so to get results that show as good as that is, is pretty impressive. So we're doing our best. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so, so like Russell mentioned, starting tomorrow morning, so today's June 7th, starting tomorrow morning, normally between 8.30 and 9 a.m. Eastern time is when I'm able to come up with this. And we'll talk in a minute about why, it, why that time is when it gets sent. But you'll be able to get these levels. And these are levels, again, predetermined. So they're not changed at, let's say, noon if we see something happen in the market. These are predetermined and you'll realize why here in, in a matter of about two or three minutes. But yeah, you'll get these from Russell and no charge. I don't need your email. I don't need your name, any of that stuff. You'll get them from Russell. And these are going to be levels that have really high likelihood. Again, this is the feedback that we get on these levels that you're going to get really high feedback. And what I wanted to do, and again, Russell, I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak to your, your, your following. And I know you're doing an awesome job and you're growing really well, but rather than just kind of give everyone the levels and say, good luck, go get them. I wanted to give a little bit of an explainer of, of how I, I came to find these levels, how we actually get them, and maybe a couple ideas from some of our more successful students who do utilize these levels each and every day. Again, some do go the funded account. Not everyone does, but I want to be able to give people a nice little uh, fire out of the gate here for the next 10 or 15 minutes so that, again, once they get these levels, it's, it, it's not completely French to them. It's not brand new to them and they might be able to really start to utilize it right off the rip. So is it okay if I go on for the next five, 10 minutes or so and give people a little bit of background and a couple ideas to get started? 
Yeah, go for it. I'm just answering a few questions. People are asking me how they get them from me, so I'm just letting them know. So yeah, you do your thing. Yeah, I'll just keep uh, answering people. Yeah, the, all, everyone yeah. talk to Russell about that. He's gonna again. He's just gonna send these to you each morning, and then you guys can chat about that. So again, starting tomorrow for the next couple of weeks. If you're one of Russell's followers, you'll be getting these levels each morning. And again, they are the reason I keep on showing this is not to toot my own horn, but to show you that hey, you're getting a lot of really accurate and actionable stuff. And I hope that you're able to use it. And I hope that it does add value to you as a trader. So the question is, how do we get these levels? Right? How do we get these levels? So it's based on a little bit more than a thesis. I would call this much more of a fact than thesis. 98% of retail options orders are buy to open. Right, So they're buying a call or they're buying a put. The overwhelming majority of retail options orders, they're either buying a call or they're buying a put. So if retail is mostly buying calls or buying puts, remember there's two sides to every trade. When you buy a call, somebody's selling it. You buy a put, somebody is selling it too. So if retail is doing all the buying, then who's doing the selling? Well, it's the market makers. The ones who are paid by the exchange to just fill as many orders as they can to provide liquidity to maintain an efficient market. So what happens is basically all day, retail are buying puts and calls. Market makers are selling those puts and calls to retail traders. And then once they sell those puts or calls to retail traders, they, for the most part, hedge off the position and then add it to their inventory. And that's it. And they're just doing this all day, every day. They don't care if they think you're right. They don't care if they think they're right. They just try to fill as many orders, hedge off those orders, and then they get paid via a rebate from the exchange. So it's kind of like a risk-free trade for them almost. And you'll see why in a second. So they do this all day, every day. They fill your order. They hedge it off. That's it. They fill your order. They hedge it off. That's it. And that's what they're doing for the most part until that short option. Remember, you bought the call. They sold it. You bought the put. They sold it. So when their short option, the one that you bought, becomes at the money, that's when all of a sudden the market makers start to do things that are different than the initial process of just filling the order, hedging it off, and moving it on to filling all the orders. What happens is when those short options, again, that they've sold to you become at the money, they do start to play defense. And this is where it becomes very, very exciting. So the idea is... When a market maker is short a call to defend that position, once that call becomes at the money, they'll sell futures. They will look to resist that level. And conversely, when a market maker is short a put, once that put becomes at the money, they will buy futures or support that level to be able to support their position. So again, really quickly as a reminder, they're just filling orders all day until those short options become at the money. And then when those short options become at the money, they just try to protect them. That's it. Not too different from what any trader would do with a position that is going to be or potentially is underwater. But these are the mechanics that market makers do all day, every single day. And the exciting thing for me is when many market makers all at the same time are either supporting or resisting the same levels. Right. And this is where it starts to get very, very exciting. What that does is, in many cases, creates support and resistance levels that are known before the market even opens. And this is why I have gotten so excited about trading intraday trading things like same day options or zero DTE because these are levels that are much more factual based than many other things that I've ever seen in the market. Because if a certain level is supported by a huge number of market makers, that's not really guessing, right? That doesn't mean that it's going to hold 100% of the time, but that's a lot more factual based than the majority of things that the average, especially retail trader would have access to on totally. a given day. And right. that's Most why people, it's so, so exciting. 
Sorry? Most people are just drawing lines, right? Most people are just drawing a sure. line from previous and, 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 and whatever. And that so. stuff works for a lot of folks. But what works for me is is the factual based stuff. Because quite frankly, I don't trust myself to make a right guesstimate or a right guess or the right call. But I trust myself to be able to say, hey, if this level is where the most amount of market makers are going to step in and buy, well, why don't I just buy two? I trust myself to do that much more than I trust myself to be able to draw the right trend line right. or use the right time frame or whatever it is. And that's just me speaking. And, and some people, I'm sure, are really good at all the other stuff, but I am historically horrible at it. <laughs> so this gets us to the point where if we know – these pockets or these levels where many market makers might look to resist or bring prices lower or support and bring prices higher. Well, then again, we can, we can quite frankly have levels that get feedback like this. Yeah. So here's what we do each night while most of the world is sleeping, we run an eight hour algorithm. And again, like this is exactly how we do it. It's expensive. It takes a long time. There's a lot of data but this is how we do it. So we run this algorithm every night and we go through every single call strike and every single put strike for every single expiration in both SPY, so the index ETF, and SPX, the cash index. So most times there's about 50 available expirations for SPY about 70 to 80 available expirations for SPX with each of those having a couple hundred calls and a couple hundred puts. So it's a ton of data. And basically what we do is we go to every one of those call strikes and every one of those put strikes for every single one of those expirations, again, in both SPY and SPX. And all we do is we take the open interest and we multiply it by the delta. Okay. That gives us pretty accurate results of what are those levels where the market makers are going to turn on to support or resist, turn on to resist and turn down. And what that does is that kind of creates something that looks like a tree right here that I get each and every morning. And what you will see here is this is probably a little bit easier to digest than the average indicator. Based on this, we do have levels where the market is likely to be resisted other than others. And so 42.95, and I'm not saying this is accurate as of today. I'm just using this as an example. Right, because they're daily, and that's a good point. They're, they're, they, it changes every day. So these aren't swing trading levels. They're for Correct. that one day, right? So I'll Correct. send them out exactly. in the morning. Keep sending them out in the mornings. And it's only for that day because the algorithm then runs overnight again and produces new, <laughs> new Right, data. so we have, we have a whole – we have a whole new day of trading. We have a whole right. new day of news that impacts how traders are, are trading. We have a brand new day of, of the whole fun and games that happens between 9.30 and 4. So every morning we get some, I get something that looks like this. And just looking at this, just from a high level, if 42.95 is likely to be resisted by more market makers than, say, 42.85. Right. And 42.75 is more likely to be resisted by a larger amount of market makers than say 4270. Yep. And at the same time, 4255 is more likely to be supported by a greater number, thus I would call it more powerful, by a greater number of market makers supported than let's say 4250. Yep. And again, this is why because we are taking like pure, I call it accurate and factual data the reason why, again, we get those incredible results, and I keep on showing because this is going to be very valuable for you all to use, especially if you're somebody who does trade intraday, because these are levels. This is a level where the greatest number of market makers, compared to any other level, at least looking at this now, are going to look to resist the prices lower, are going to be selling futures. And these are levels where large numbers of market makers are going to be buying futures to support the prices so that their options that they are short don't go in the money that they that they hopefully stay out of the money for as long as possible and that's really all it is so the most successful students of mine 
who utilize these levels, they do a bunch of different things, right? Most people will start with kind of what I'm talking about right here, and that will get them 80, 90% of the way there. And then just by more repetitions, just doing it more times, you know, a doctor who does a brain surgery is going to be better on his 50th surgery than his first one. But you got to start somewhere, right? Start somewhere with, with a good framework. So this is kind of like that framework. And then over those 50 surgeries, the doctor gets better, figures out, well, this way works a little better for me than this way and so on and so forth. So most of our students who get these levels, and again, Russell's going to send them each morning. They kind of start here and then they might branch out a little bit, do a little variation here, a little bit of an adjustment here, maybe add something else like an indicator or something else that they might have confidence in to be able to really come up with something that they like really well. So here are three pretty basic and straightforward ways that a lot of my students who do really well with these levels start with. Again, these are by no means like the holy grail. It, you will have to try these out. You will have to take notes. You will have to monitor these levels. You will have to get repetitions under your belt, just like anything. But here's just a couple ideas for folks so that when you get these levels starting tomorrow, it's not completely foreign to you. And you might have a good idea of a couple things to do. So one of the things that some of my students do is, again, like Russell mentioned, these levels are good for one day and one day only. Sometimes the levels do carry over from one day to the next, but that's not typical. That's only really typical when the market goes nowhere, right? If the market closes flat, well, then the levels may be the same the next day or at least close. But most, most days the market isn't flat, in which case most, most days these levels are going to be adjusted each and every day. So what some traders do is they use these levels to intraday trade. For example, when we get down to support, if, that, if those are levels where many market makers are going to be buying futures to support prices, well, they'll jump in on the party and they'll buy too. It doesn't have to be futures. It can be stock. It could be selling put spreads. It could be buying calls. It could be buying futures. Again, these things do work best if you're going to be utilizing options for the zero DTE, the same day ones, for sure. So again, we get up to a level of resistance. Hey, if a bunch of market makers are going to be sellers at that point, may not be the worst idea to join in on the party. Pretty good. So that's one kind of simple way for some folks to get started. Another way is to use these levels in conjunction with some sort of price action. Right? So there's a lot of different price action out there, You know, uh, lower highs, higher lows, all that stuff. And let's say, for example, we get up to a level of, uh, we get down to a level of support. And it's a level of support where market makers around that level realistically should be stepping in and buying futures to support the market. What you might do is say, okay, maybe two, three, four, or maybe $5 above or below that level of support. Do I see bullish price action? And if I do see bullish price action, around those levels, well, hey, I have the bullish price action and I have support for market makers. And that might be right. really a really interesting kind of concept for some folks to start with. And the same thing would be true when it comes to resistance. So for example, mm -hmm. if we're getting near, let's say $5 above or $5 below, a noted level of resistance, and you also see some bearish price action, hey, that might be a really nice entry point. Yeah. Another way, kind of the final way that I'll talk about during this session is these can also be targets because these levels are higher levels of liquidity. And if you notice, especially if you do this more than a couple of days here or there, um, market tends to try to find as much liquidity as it can, especially when some of the bigger players are involved because they can't just hit the buy button. They need to hit the buy button when there's enough orders to be able to fill, when there's enough volume to be able to fill their orders. So you may have a situation where you're in an intraday trade for whatever reason. Maybe you have an indicator. Maybe you have a hunch. Maybe there's price action. And let's say you're long a future or long stock or long an SPY option that expires the same day, zero DTE. Well, you might have a target of the next level of resistance 
because that is a level where prices might start being resisted by market makers. Yeah. So these are a couple of pretty basic ways for folks to get started. Um, again, these are not the holy grail. These are great starting points. There is more to this, but for everyone who's going to be getting these levels from Russell starting again tomorrow, um, I do think these are awesome, awesome starting points. A lot of the students who I work with who do exceptionally well make four or five figures a week pretty reliably on this. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we have, we, so I will tell you, we have, I have students, and not everyone is this, but I have students who are on pace to make well over six figures this year, well over six Ooh. figures, just doing trades off of these levels. That we Sweet, have a right? young lady, we have a couple young ladies in, in one of our programs who have done five figure weeks, um, who have done 30,000 in a month doing this. And, and again, it, it's, it's not the holy grail. But when you are trading based on objectiveness and real data, things are much less of a guess and much more of a, okay, what is my plan? And let me follow that plan. And basically, the more I can follow a plan that does have some sort of an edge, the better the results really are going to end up being. So sure. these, are, these are really some, some awesome ways for folks to get started. Again, I wanted to come on here and I appreciate Russell. And I see there's a bunch of questions and I'll hang out for as long as everyone needs for those. But again, you're going to be getting these levels tomorrow. And I just wanted to go over, hey, here's kind of the reason why these levels exist. Hey, here's how we kind of get them. And here are a couple of ways to get started. So again, it's not completely foreign to you when you start getting these levels so that you kind of have an idea of where you might want to get started. I will yeah. say I know I'm not supposed to give recommendations because I'm not licensed and all that stuff. But I definitely right. recommend if you are interested in utilizing these levels, at least start on the paper account because the people who are the most successful with these, it's just about repetitions. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know if you, you know, if you're not comfortable doing it with the real money right away, which is totally fine, you would get a benefit from starting on the paper account just because that would get you repetitions quicker. Yeah, just even marking up the charts with the levels and keeping an eye on them throughout the day and being like, oh, cool. Yeah, I saw that rejected or, you know, mm -hmm. and you can kind of go from there. Um, quick question from CRCR. He's asking, is this similar to volume open interest? I know you mentioned open interest and things earlier. Um, can we elaborate on that? Yeah, great question, CRCR. So volume is what happens during the day. Open interest is after all that stuff that happens during the day, how many options have not closed that are open at that level. And so volume is volume. You don't know if those are all closing. You don't know if those are opening in terms of options, but open interest will be able to tell you, okay, if we have on a given day, 100 open interest, and then we have volume of 75. And then all of a sudden the overnight, it turns out the open interest is 150, right? That would mean that of course, there were 50 new contracts that are still open, even though there were 75 that traded that day. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And then, so my question for you was, how do you trade them? So what's your favorite way to trade these, these lines, these levels? Um, <laughs> without getting into too much detail, I automate these completely. Okay. Without yeah. getting into too much detail. So without getting into too much detail, I, I do automate these around the really kind of uh, really, really large levels. Out of these three, this would certainly be my favorite one. Certainly my favorite one. And it's something that I do when I'm available to trade. So not every day am I available to really be there very frequently. But I love being in a situation where we get down to support and I see, let's say, a lower low made. And then we make a high and then we make a higher low. I, I love seeing that like if i'm available to trade that and we're by a level of support and i see that price action i will take that trade nearly a hundred percent of the time but i but i need yeah. both those things i, I like yeah. doing it that way for sure and that this is how i love doing it. and the same thing would be on the short side too yeah and that's my plan so going forward when you start sending me these levels and i forward them on to the guys on my email list if you're not in the email list just post I'll, I'll post another link to join so you can get these levels starting tomorrow so my plan tomorrow is to and i've done this in the past when i got these levels from Stephen before is 
I'm going to combine them with a couple indicators that I use. And it's just something that I kind of keep an eye on. So for example, if you have a long signal and it's going up and it's starting to bang against some key level that Steven sent out, I'll be suspicious at that point whether it's going to break it or not because it's one of these strong resistant levels. And so that will influence my management of the trade. So I'll either be like, oh, I think I'll give it a miss until it breaks that, or I'll, you know, maybe I'll go short when it reverses off of it or whatever. So for you guys, I know a lot of you are using things like Lux Algo um, and all these other different indicators, the free ones, the premium ones. Combining them, it, it does work. And I remember when I was running the nav room, uh, the navigation room with GPS and stuff. I was doing this. I was always checking these SPX levels every day during the during the, the trading day, and they, they really do help cut out the losing trades, right? Like that's they, they definitely add another yeah, confluence yeah. that's really strong. So. Again, again, uh, uh, this will take repetitions. There are plenty of people who get it right off the bat. Not everyone does, and that's okay. Just because, again, the, the, if you do anything for the first time, you should not expect to be a pro at it, but. Um, if you're if you are going to be someone who would like to or is interested in doing things intraday. Now, I used to avoid it like the plague. I used to scream from the mountaintops. Do not day trade. Do not intraday trade. I used to beat that drum louder than anyone else. But that's changed because the data has changed and because the information has changed. And that, again, it's why I love so much about the market is the the the. Not everything is always going to remain 100% constant. And these levels are really yeah. super accurate right now. So, yeah, again, I would, I know I'm not supposed to give recommendations, but I would recommend start on the paper account, monitor it because 30 days from now, if you're following these levels and you're trying out a bunch of things and you're taking notes on the trades that you're doing and you're logging them and you're, you're asking yourself, hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? You're going to be better than you are right now, which is basically day zero. And yeah. the and the, the the really successful people, the people that make four to five figures a week, and I could say that because I've actually seen their statements. That's great. They just have repetitions under their belt more than you have. That's that's yeah. that's really really. It. And of course, they are able to use their trade size properly and not get overly emotional. Um, right. Yeah, use it with indicators. Use it with price action. Use them on their own. There is a version of this that I would be shocked if it didn't benefit almost every single trader. Again, assuming you want to or are interested in trading intraday, because again, these listed levels that you'll get are good for that day and that day only. Yep. Lots of questions coming in. People are watching and they were quiet and now like so many hit questions me. are coming in. They so think the I'm going to leave. So they're, they're putting them <laughs> in now. So hit me. The first one is easy to answer. They're asking, is it being recorded? Yeah, so this is a live stream, but it'll stay up on my channel. So if you're in my audience somewhere, you're going to see emails or Facebook posts or Discord messages. You're going to see something um, sending people to this uh, to this live stream. Uh, so it's recorded. Yeah, it'll be up permanently on my YouTube. Um, next one is from Mr. Alternative Contrarian. Let's see. Can I get these levels drawn in my trading view charts? I think you have to draw them in yourself. We'll be emailing them out. There's no... No way that I know of to automatically put them on, right, Steve? Yeah, and uh, Russell, what I'll do for your peeps and your peeps only is I will also list the premium between uh, S&P futures and SPX uh, if folks are going to be doing that too, because that does change every day also. Um, so I'll cool. also give that too. So so you won't be able to copy and paste, but uh, certainly you'll be able to draw these in a matter of you know one or two minutes each day. And again, these yeah. the goal is, 8 30 to 9 eastern each day so at least a half an hour before the the cash opens yeah very cool and then so hannah's asking will these levels work with futures i think we've covered that a little bit but maybe some more elaboration on um how people could trade es or the mes yeah. with um, yeah. so with so they do uh, again i will provide the premium between spx and es each day so like today for example there's a premium of six points it's like 4,300 on SPX it was 4,306 on ES. So just knowing that we'll be able to get you what you're looking for. Yeah, because that's another question here is can you convert the levels to show on ES features? Yeah. The number of are different. So I guess we've answered both of these questions. Yeah. Here's another one. I'm putting them up on the screen. I don't know if you can see them or not. Like, uh, I'm Yeah, not I can sure. see them. It's perfect. It's really cool. StreamYard. I love okay, it. Okay, cool. Write that yeah, down. so what capital size are they using to do well? How much risk must you use? What kind of stop loss? That's quite a that's quite a question in terms no, of. No, this is I'm really happy use. I got this question, Joseph. 
So most folks are not going to like my answer, but if there's actually one thing that you learn from me, it should be this. You should be risking the amount of money that allows you to remain without emotion. I'm going to repeat that again, and then I'm going to go into it a little bit. The amount of capital you should be risking. So by the way, to buy puts and calls, you need the money in the account. To buy stock, you need enough money in the account. To, to buy futures, I don't know, was it two grand? To buy yourself futures, I don't know, like two grand. So the amount of capital isn't really important. The most important thing is, however much you are using per trade, traders lose money because they trade with emotion, not because they're bad traders, not because they don't know this stuff. Traders just lose money because they trade with emotion. So again, 99% of traders make money on the paper account. Then it's the exact same thing, the exact same speed, the exact same prices on the real account, and everything goes to hell. That's just because there's emotion involved. So you should be risking an amount of money where you can follow your rules. Like, for example, let's say you're going to buy a future, a micro future, at a level of support, and you're going to risk 10 points. So you're going to risk 10 points to the downside on support to make 10 points on the upside. So on a micro future, that's I don't know. That's like 50 bucks you can make or lose. It's like 50 bucks you can make or lose, right? Or 25 bucks, whatever it is. Yep. If you're able to maintain that stop loss and maintain that profit loss, that just means you're risking an acceptable amount. Now, eventually as you go up, what you want to catch yourself is if you have that 10 point profit target and that 10 point stop loss and you don't let it get there. If you don't let it get to that profit or you don't let it get to that stop loss, that's just how you know you're using too much capital in terms of the risk per trade that's forcing you to be emotional and you need to reduce your trade size. So again, the capital is however much is needed to place these trades. But the most important thing is the risk. And it is whatever risk you can do that allows you to follow your rules that you set out to make and trade without emotion. If you only learn one thing from me, it should be that because that is the only thing I've ever seen that takes somebody who gets terrible results to overnight gets much better results. And it normally requires a 50% reduction in trade size to get there. That makes a lot of sense. And I was telling somebody the same thing today. I'm like, Derek, why are you only using 3% of your account per trade? Why would you not use a lot more? And I'm like, because if I use more, I'm going to trade really, really badly. <laughs> so um, even though it's a small amount of profit, it's still something that allows me to not freak out each time like it goes slightly yeah, again. I have, <laughs> I have a multi seven figure trading account and I cannot use more than 10 S&P contracts. Right. Emotionally, yeah. I can't handle it. So I don't. Perfect. I'm able to follow the rules really easily. I'm able to let the auto trades happening. So I'm not even I'm not even worried about what happens. And I'm good there. Once I start to use more, I start to mess with it. And my results just aren't nearly as good. Yeah. And so CJ is asking, how do we access the levels directly? So there so this is um so what we're doing at the moment is if you're on my email list, if you're in my groups, we're going to send you the levels out for free every morning until I think June 21st seems to be the date, right? A couple then, weeks. Then, yeah. And so what normally happens is, is um, Stephen does sell this as a, as a separate service. So it's awesome that you're giving it to us for free for a couple of weeks. That's really great. So I'm yeah. excited to trade them. Uh, yeah. And then after that, then you do get them by email. It might be worth elaborating a little bit more on that service and what it will entail and things in terms of you will st still get them with email if you sign up for that. But is that there's other stuff involved with the service, right? There's probably a chat room or like extra extra stuff in there. Yeah. So there's a premium version of this um, that involves automation, that involves understanding the strength of the of the levels. Not all levels are created equal, right? As you saw before. Some of these levels are more likely to hold than others. And I think everyone can visually see that. And we also have a, a room where we have many traders who are just posting their trades, posting their successes each and every day, and talking about all the different trades and what they're, what they're uh, doing on a given day. And it's really cool. The, uh, 
we the success rate for that program is probably double the success rate of my second highest program that I've that I've done over the past couple of years. And it's just because the way that program was built is it was built with students. So like the students helped me build it in the first two weeks of the program. So the information is the way they want it. The content is the way they want it. Um, some of the some of the charts that they get, some of the indicators that they get is literally what they asked for. So the program, one of the reasons it works so well, because these levels are accurate and it's and it, it becomes simple with with doing it for maybe one to two weeks. But another reason that the success is off the charts when it comes to that program is just because well, it was also built with the customers and with the students, too. So it's everything they want in it and nothing more. Yeah. And I have to say, so what I've seen of it so far, and I looked at some of the testimonials and things, is the, the main reason that we're here right now is I was so impressed with the idea behind this, but also the positive feedback as well. And so I told I told told that to you, right, Stephen, where I'm like, yeah. this is like, I can't say no to like going through <laughs> this and, and talking about this and exploring it and, and doing presentations like this because yeah, it's, it's still high quality. <laughs> it's very so, exciting because... Yeah. We are, I, th I mean, what, uh, I think May of last year, May of 2020 was when they came to five days a week of expert of uh, yeah. expiring options and SPX. So before then it was like three days a week for a couple months. Right. And now it's five. And I would bet almost anything that you'll see the apples of the world go to five days a week. The Amazons right. of the world go to five days a week. And this information is just as available for your Apples, your Amazons, your especially the really liquid, the really liquid products, the high volume. So what right. really one of the things that excites me, of course, is the accuracy of these levels, which everyone will be able to experience firsthand. But another thing is learning something like this is like an inning one of understanding this data and these levels and how market makers operate and how retail can participate with institutions and, and with professionals and with market makers. And, and again, the like exchanges are going to add these contracts five days a week for all the liquid names and, and learning it now in inning one, I, I think will set many up for success for quite a while yeah. to come. For quite and a while. It, and that's what's got my interest as well. How did you get interested in this depth of the market? Because a lot of people don't ever go to this length of like analysis. Like most people just look at like unusual options or technical indicators yeah. or whatever. But this feels like a whole like a deep dive. Like how did you get turned on to this stuff? Like where did this all come from? <laughs> I had like, a percentage of my yeah. students were like, can you teach me how to day trade? And I was like, I don't know how. Like Every time I tried, I would just like give money away. So I just stopped giving money <laughs> away. And I, I have a data team and sure. and just, just kind of looking at things, trying to get information like, why does the market stop here? <laughs> why does the market go there? Like, how are we getting to these levels and then like turning on a dime and what's maybe similar to those and and what's really going on? And and I think one of the things that initially got me like, maybe there's something here is I had one of my developers basically make like a custom indicator on Thinkorswim that would just plot open interest. Mm -hmm. And then I would actually, Thinkorswim gave S&P futures free access to book map oh. uh, a, a while ago, like last year or something. And what I was noticing is around some of these high open interest levels, you would all of a sudden see big amounts of liquidity come in. And I was like, wait a second. That's really interesting. And then I was like, well, we're only using the open interest for like that day's expiration. What if we use the open interest for everything? And then I was like, oh, that actually makes it even more accurate than using just the same day. And yes, maybe there's really something significant here. So cool. that's really how I got into it. But I never do anything personally unless the data backs it up. Just because, again, like I said before, I don't trust my, <laughs> I don't trust myself to be able to make a good guess. I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but if something works 
80% of the time, 60% of the time, and there's a ABC step that I can do better than most. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever do sports science? I know you did baseball. You were a professional baseball player for a while. Did you ever get into sports science? Like, because it seems almost like you've got a, a scientific uh, kind of flair to you <laughs> going through this. Well, stuff. When, when, when I start when I started when I started trading, I was a minor leaguer, and I mm -hmm. and in the minor leagues, you don't make a lot of money, and you, you have a lot of free time. And I was like, well, why don't I trade? Because in the country in, in Burlington, North Carolina, there were these guys on CNBC each morning that, that were bazillionaires, had all this money. I was like, come on, those guys couldn't have been that much smarter than me. And I got my butt handed to me really quickly, <laughs> really quickly. Um, and I, 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 just, I just didn't trust myself. But data, like big data, cloud was just kind of becoming a little bit popular. People were talking about those things. My older brother was a professional poker player, so he was very okay. analytical, incredibly analytical. And I just took the fact that baseball was very kind of statistical based. You had my brother playing poker, very statistical based. And the fact that when I called the shots myself, I did worse than everyone watching this. I right. almost guarantee you. So my results started getting really good when I got into the data to be able to say, okay, let's just find stuff that works like way more than half the time that has a positive expected return per trade. And then let me just do that until I'm blue in the face, because like, that's something I can handle. And right. if I lose a couple of times, the data will still give me the confidence to get back in there and keep on clicking the yeah. button at the right time. Well, it's exciting. It seems like you're doing, doing all the stuff that, you know, most people wish they could do, right. Basing their trading on, on data and then also basing it, like taking the emotion out of it. Right. As well. Um, with some of your other stuff. So a few yeah. other questions kicking around. Hit me. Um, Lawrence is asking, is there any chart examples in this presentation? We haven't put anything together. Um, do you happen to have anything on hand that shows the levels um, on a on one of your brokerages? Or a, you probably I don't think you prepared anything particularly. Sure, no, no. I'm um, going yeah. to I'm going to stop the share so people don't copy my password. That'd be that's a good <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> I'll pull up. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll pull it up right now. If you just give me a second, give me another question while I do this. Yeah, sure. So yeah, so we're gonna have a look at an actual chart, which is cool. Um, so let me see. Um, somebody asking to sign up for the premium service. Um, I think um, the cool thing here, though, is that Stephen's given two weeks of basically free a free trial for two weeks, essentially, right? Via me, which is awesome. I get to be in the middle, which is cool because <laughs> I get to do it too. Um, so this is on. This is unheard of. Like, I, I don't find anybody doing this kind of stuff that gives two weeks like this. It's very unusual. So, um, you know, there'll be plenty of time to sign up for a premium service as long as you're on my email list, which I'll make sure you are because I'll put a link in right here. Uh, I'm going to make sure that you get on to um, the premium service whenever you can. Let me just copy this in. Are you on my um, email list already, uh, Mr. All Things Money? Um, all Things no Money, I love it. All Things Money, yeah. Uh, Here's the um, link to sign up for these alerts. You will be on my um, you will be on my email list. So the, the thing is, if you're already on my email list, also put your your information in there because it'll help me segment the people that are really interested in getting these these alerts and, and this stuff from Stephen. Um, so even if you're on, it's worth putting your details in there. I am going to send it to my whole email list, but at some point it's going to narrow down to the people who are really interested and are actually using the levels and things. So. Um, it's always good to be on on there. So so just um, yeah, click on that, um, and then don't worry. Um, we'll give you more information about things if you find these levels helpful and stuff as we go along. Um, we'll um, I'm just adding Stephen's thing here. Um, okay. We'll um, we'll make sure you you get hooked up with Stephen's service yeah. if, if it's something you want to do. So yeah. So here were the levels for today. You can see pretty clearly we rallied a little bit off the gate. And hit that 4,300 to almost a penny. And um, this is on a five-minute chart. What I could also tell you is on a, on a one-minute chart, there was also a very bearish price action around that level. I don't want to get too much into that right now because that might be a little bit complex. But in this, this happened today. And we had levels of resistance and we had levels of support. We didn't get down to support, but we bounced within the first 15 minutes of the day were rejected directly off that resistance at 4,300. Now, again, these levels will not be identical 
every day. They will not be identical tomorrow, but they, they do have really, really shockingly high accuracy, especially for something that you get before the market even opens. That's it. It, it, it will be a little bit funky um, to start. So I just want to warn everyone, it will be a little bit funky to start when all of a sudden something happens at two o'clock in the afternoon in terms of something being supported or resisted that you found out about at eight 30 in the morning. So it will be a little bit funky. It's not magic. Again, you, we just, we just went through exactly how these levels we come up with, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So you can draw, this is thinkorswim. Mm -hmm. TD Ameritrade isn't paying me to show you this. This is just <laughs> the platform I use. And yeah, these levels were again, accurate today. And then there was a really nice, uh, resistance slash short trade, you know, within the first 15, 20 minutes of the day. And uh, the market stayed right between those levels for the rest of the day. Perfect. That's an awesome demonstration. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, that sounds good. So, let me see other questions. Um, CJ says he'll sign up if it's legit. I can tell you it's legit. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make in this industry is to assume everything's some sort of scam or doesn't work. I think if people lose a lot of uh, potential. Um, potential um, things that could really help make them money by just, you know, being too wary of things. So, um, so I know Stephen, um, and I know these levels are legit. I've traded them in the past. Uh, there's no question; they're not just made up or random, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess they're not just random, like oh, I'm just going to put three levels up here and then sell it to people for a thousand dollars or something. Yeah, and like, and one thing, and one thing I do want to jump in on with the last comment about if it's legit. Yeah. Um. What I will tell you is, so I've been, this is now my sixth year doing this. I've worked with a large number of students and bluntly speaking, there is a very clear difference between those who are successful with at least my programs and those who are not successful. Cause as you saw, we do surveys all the time. So 90% of the successful students, at least based on our surveys, and there might be some people who are successful that don't give the feedback. And there might be some people that maybe aren't a hundred percent truthful in their, in their responses, kind of like Russell was mentioning, but like 90% of our successful students, like log into the program at least twice a week, like are in the chat room at least twice a week, come to weekly coaching and then when you look at the unsuccessful students, at least based on the, uh, at least based on the survey, they like never log in. They like never show up. Right. So, uh, you know, repetition is the only way folks are going to get better. Yeah. And the people who use the programs more by a large amount are far more successful. And I think yeah. that a lot of folks will maybe try something for a week here or there and, I don't know how realistic that is to really get. If we're looking to make supplemental income and then eventually be able to replace our day job or our retirement income via trading, it, it, it can't be a dip my toe in the water situation. And that just shows based on the customer feedback. And then when you when you have like membership areas and all this stuff, you get all the data of who logs in and when. And it's just every single time is the people who show up more who do more repetitions, who ask yeah. more questions, who get more involved, get the best results. So hopefully, you know, no, it doesn't matter if it's my program, it's whatever program you want, but it's the so more true. repetitions you, you do, the more you get involved, the more you ask questions, at least from my stuff, the better the results yeah. are by like large amounts. Yeah. And that's what I see too. So I review all these different programs, I'll join them and, and then recommend them to people and things. And, and like the people that stick with the programs are the ones that, that do well, but the ones that don't will often, they'll take three losses in a row and then they'll start posting everywhere that somehow it's a scam. It's the worst program ever or whatever. So <laughs> I see it all the time. I get, I get people sending me yep. messages all the time going, this is the worst program you've ever like recommended. How dare you? And stuff. I'm sitting there going, yeah, but wait a week and you'll get another string of winners and just yeah. don't give up. Like there's also going, garbage out there. <laughs> there's plenty of garbage out there. So like Russell knows a lot of stuff is garbage, but what I'll tell you is, I have a young lady in one of my programs who using these levels in the month of May made over $30,000. And six months ago, that young lady was trading on the SIM account. That's on great. The SIM. 
and she sure, does not yeah. have a very large account. Um, does not have a very large account. But what that person did was every day they showed up. And after a month or so, they started with a contract. Really? And then they, they built it up from there. And and I don't and I will tell you, the people who are committed and who have the availability, I, I don't think that person started from a different point than anyone else out there. Yeah. Very cool. Do you see the next question is uh, from I do. Kevin? Is it successful with credit spreads? Well, Let's if you <laughs> if you let's say we ran up to forty three hundred today and you sold a call credit spread, well, that probably would have worked that favorable. Again, this can be done with buying puts if you want to be bearish on a trade, selling call spreads. I prefer to sell a call spread as opposed to buying a put debit spread, but that's just me. So again, any bearish trade will do on a bearish type of thing. And, um, and it's just kind of, hey, which of those bearish strategies do you like that kind of fit your personality and fit what your goals are? Yeah. Makes sense. Hannah is asking, are we getting just the levels from Russell or also getting the TOS group? You're just getting levels. From yeah, we're just getting levels right now. And and again, if you want more, we'll talk about that. But again, I want everyone to get access to them because these levels are really kicking some major, major, major butt right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it's another question from CJ again. I'll put it up if we can put it up here. Uh, thank you. Oh, no, that's a totally another question just came in. Let me uh, just sorry, get this. Uh, can we have a follow-up video after a few week trial so we can share feedback and results? Sure. I mean, we could do. Um, we could probably do something again in a couple of weeks, right? I could talk everyone's ear off if they really want me to. So, <laughs> yeah. I may not want that, but sure, we can do whatever. Look, I, I, I've been able to, I've been able to improve my life substantially, and live a wonderful life, and a lot of it comes from trading. And there are things that I have done that have whiffed and you'll never hear me talk about them but there are also things like what you've seen here today that really have worked for me super well and you also hear me stop you know standing on top of a mountain screaming about how how much i i, I do believe in some of these things too so i'm happy to help out as best as i can cool yeah i think that would be fun i could take some trades over the next week or two and then um you guys are getting them sent out to you we can kind of have a discussion about it we can yeah. do it if it's just me or if Stephen has time, we could do it with both of us again or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here's another one. Thank you, Stephen. Do you have like an open hours where we do the calculations and come to ensure what our calculations are work with your method? Does it work that way? I'm not quite sure what the question is there. Do you? Yeah, so I'm happy to answer. So this is exactly how we come up with the numbers. Um, Tonami, this is exactly how we come up with those numbers. Again, you are more than welcome to try this. It's going to be challenging, um, to say the least, to be able to come up with these. So again, you're getting the support levels and the resistance levels without having to do the legwork yourself. Cool. Um, cool, yeah, so the questions are drying up. Is there any other thoughts that you have? And I think, I, I think I'm think i excited to get started with these tomorrow again. Yeah. It's been a yeah, while so since I, I would say the biggest thing, the biggest, this is a, a wonderful system. It has done some really incredible, incredible things. The results are, the results are really, really extraordinary. And I, I, I don't want to go, too much in, into the results, but I'll just do it now. These results are extraordinary. $4,000 in a week, $5,500 in one day, $2,000 on one trade. And I'll just keep scrolling. I'll just pick random ones. $1,200 in a day, $3,000 in two weeks, $1,730 in one day. I'm just going to do random ones. 82 grand in the first two weeks. This person has a very big account. $12,000, $1,200, over $5,000 on three stress free trades, $3,000 in one day, $2,150 in one trade. I'll just keep scrolling. Yeah. $800 in six ever. trades. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so I think everyone kind of gets the idea there. But, yeah. but you won't come close to those results 
if you're risking too much money and you're becoming emotional. Yeah. If, yeah. Th if I give you the greatest system that ever happened on, on the history of the planet, it wouldn't matter if you risked too much money and became emotional. Totally. Yeah. It, it, won't, it doesn't matter. So if I tell you, if, if, if I tell you the most secret trades, well, there's no such thing as really secret trades, really. But if I, I tell you like the best trades that have ever worked for me and blah, 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 and all this stuff, it won't work if you risk too much and you become emotional. So you, you are going to get something that is quite accurate that we get great feedback on that is really a lot more factual based than most things in the market. And then if you combine that with trading without emotion, being able to follow your own rules, that's when things really start to, to happen. So you're getting the, the blueprint, not the full entirety kit and caboodle, but you're getting a starting point of, of, a, of a system that does quite well. Um, and again, if you risk too much, it'll be worthless to you. But if you keep your risk in check and you trade without emotion, you'll be pretty surprised with uh, the benefit that you're going to get here, I think. Cool. Yeah, so just a couple of things to wind up. Brian's asking, where does the data come from? We did cover that earlier on, but maybe yep. a quick summary. Yep, of I'm happy to do it again. So what we do is we go through every call strike and put strike for every expiration in both SPY and SPX. That's normally about 120 expirations. And we go through every call strike, every put strike for all those expirations. And we just take the open interest and we multiply by the delta. That's it. And that gives us something that looks like this. where We're able to just visually say, okay, hey, this level looks like it's going to be more resisted than this one. And again, what you are all going to get is just the levels. Not going to get the big tree, all that stuff. Just, hey, this level is resistance one, two, and three. This level of support, one, two, and three. That's really it. Cool. Nice and simple. It sounds good. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited. So I may also... Um... May also, so I did a live stream today of me trading um, a little bit. So if you guys are watching the live stream, I know some of you are there today um, that are commenting here. Um, I'll probably be talking about the levels too. So I'll be looking at the levels as I take some trades um, tomorrow uh, if I have time to do a live stream on my channel. So hopefully we can talk about this a bit more um, for you guys that are around during the day. could be pretty good. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, um, Stephen. That's awesome. I think and um, you, dude. I think it's really cool. So I think a lot of people are interested in this, and going forward, we'll um, let's explore these levels and and um, yeah, see how it goes. It'll be cool. Yeah. Again, if you are somebody who is interested or desires to do things on an intraday basis, because these do work for intraday, and they don't work for like forty-five days out, fifty days out, none of that stuff. If you are, do something with these levels. <laughs> right. If it means just writing them down, awesome. If it means yeah. just putting them on your chart and just looking at the end of the day, awesome. If it means paper trading, awesome. Like, I think you should do something with them and start getting repetitions under your belt. Because again, on day 30 or day 20, you're going to have a lot more experience and yeah. uh, you're going to be, you're going to understand things a lot better than on day zero. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, perfect. Is there any more questions? You can always reach out to me. I can try and answer what I know. If not, I'll pass you on to Stephen um, over the next couple of weeks. But if there's no more questions at the moment, I'll give it a few more minutes to see. Um, then we could wrap this up and um, enjoy enjoy the rest of the evening and get, get up nice and early to trade tomorrow. It'll be fun. Yeah, this should be a fun week. Yeah, I'm, this I'm excited. Be a fun week. Well, it's, yeah. one of, it's like, when have we had like five days in a row when a Fed person isn't able to speak, God, I don't know. <laughs> and we don't have like CPI or like this or that or the other. Like, like this week has been golden just because it's, it's one of the few weeks where you don't have like three Fed people right. speaking right. every day. You don't have right. like some major PPI, CPI, all these things that are like so, such a big deal now. Disrupted, it's one yeah. of the like the first weeks in a while where like you've just been able to do your thing. And not have to worry about how many people are going to say we need interest rates to go to 50% and whatever, whatever they're deciding to yeah. do. 
Yeah, no, it is fantastic. Kind of saying the Fed blackout is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's the they, worst thing ever. Pricing it right now. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever when you enter a trade and you haven't checked the economic calendar, and immediately within minutes, the thing goes the opposite way due to some imbecile. So they. Thing. <laughs> so they're pricing in hold, and then a hike in July, hold in September cut in november cut in december so basically end the year where we are right now is where the market is pricing it in i i promise you wednesday of next week is that fomc i think so this will look different yeah yeah and then everything has to change again Okay, final the final question, because we're going to wrap this up. Um, I'll put it up on the screen here. Does a bunch of people trading the levels ever cause the levels to not hold? And finally, in fact, finally a Kamish week. Yeah, so Great um, my guess is absolutely not, right? Great question. <laughs> okay, let me just pull this up really quickly here. Actually, it doesn't really matter. Okay, here's the S&P 500. Now, again, this settles to cash, so there's no stock to trade. Today, the S&P traded 2.788 million options contracts. And if we go to our friend over at SPY, we had 85 million shares today, which is low, actually. And we had 8.8 million options contracts. So you would need a large percentage of the market participants to all be trading off of this exact strategy, I believe, I believe, for this to become saturated and less effective. You would need market makers Correct. to change the way they operate. You would need a lot of stuff to happen. And again, anything can happen in this game. But you would need a lot of things to change rapidly for for this to become a completely different scenario, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the market makers aren't watching this uh, presentation. And <laughs> well, I mean, like, like, I don't know how you're going to change hedging strategies that have been around. <laughs> right. like, like, I don't know how you're going to do that. Right. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, guys, I think let's wrap it up there. Let's, um, one last quick check. Everybody's just saying very insightful. Thanks. Um, fantastic. All right. Well, awesome. Thanks very much for coming on. And I appreciate this being able to send out these key levels to people um, in the, my spheres of influence. And hopefully we can make some money together and, um, and, and have some fun doing it. So, so Get started. Cool. Do not risk too much. Monitor. Again, day 30, you're going to be way better than day zero. Russell, I really appreciate you having me on. It was super fun. I love talking about markets. I'm so happy to hear that you're doing so well and your audience is growing. You know you know so much about the market, so I'm so happy to hear that. Everyone, thank you for your time this evening. And again, Russell, thank you so much, dude. Great. Thanks again, Stephen. And have a good night, guys. All right, man. End there. All right, cheers. Later.